mind. Branding. There we go. Got people in here. Holy cow. <clears throat> yeah, we already have more than we did for child. Oh, Eric Fox with the background making us all look like chumps. Looks so official. <laughs> and he's got, I forgot about your mic. Goofy. That mic sounds so good. Yeah, he's got the cool mic and the cool star yeah, feel in the background. Absolutely Everything. crushing it. Hey, Mitch. How's it going, y'all? Good. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Oh, look Breaking at that. Rapture. Got some Sugarfoot Stout. Okay. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's got... the uh, Cesar Spelt Cesar. Oh, is that what you're drinking? Oh, okay, my bad. I don't even know. Okay. I've got the uh, I've got the Jeff Ward Stout going. Yeah, that's I was going to crack my last one open, Phil. This is my <laughs> last one. Yeah. This is my last one, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm just, I'm drinking uh, whiskey, but I have my Rapture mug that I like to drink it out of. Oh, no. is that, yeah, is it's that pretty cute. Glass etched, or is that just a, a, a graphic? It's 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 gold et etching, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I'll let you see it whenever you come to Tulsa. Yeah, I'll take a picture. Might of even it. let you hold it. Well, let's see. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Go. Uh, uh, okay, let me see here. Um, I gotta make sure I don't miss anyone when they come in. I might I'll edit right this back. real quick. I'm so sorry, guys. We run a professional program here. Um, how do I? We're only seven minutes late. Whatever. It's okay. Hey, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I want to just turn off like having to admit people in. Okay, I think this is it. Um... Oh well, I'll just. Uh, I I think I just did it. Maybe people can join just whenever, or maybe I just made it so they can't join. Anyways, uh, welcome everybody to the book club. I see some familiar faces. I see, yeah. Oh, Loki. Loki's a familiar face. Um, I, I also, I just need to take a second because I see somebody that I went to college with and I have to say hi. Caleb, what's going on, dude? Hey, it's good to yeah. see you, dude. Dude, it's so good to see you too. Caleb is, a, is, another, is another author, um, so it's very All cool right. to have him um in this chat i i was gonna bring down here i'm gonna do it really quick because i have to what to, to plug his book while he's yeah i'm showing my midriff i don't want to i don't want to pull a jeff word and show my butt crack on stream but i've got caleb's book uh his one of his new novellas right here so i'm gonna i'm gonna put this i'm gonna try and put this strategically so we can see it maybe <laughs> we'll see i don't know i'll put it on its side How thanks for the plug man I yeah, appreciate there's a little it. plug yeah and maybe I'll maybe I'll feature it here in a bit. You know what? We'll just cover up gothic. Who cares about that? It's fine. That. I got plenty of gothics. I got the shirt. Multiple we're good. copies of that right there. <laughs> I have too many editions of gothic. Um so yeah, welcome guys. No such uh, thing. No such thing. That's true. Yeah, I, I'm probably gonna buy a few more before we're done with the stream. <laughs> um so thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is hey, I'm Tim's super here. excited. Yeah, we got Tim. I don't think I've actually ever met Tim via. Hey, how you do? Hey, Tim. Good, good to, to see you. you, man. Was it Tim and Tim? Were you at our one of our last zooms? One of our no, I don't think so. the uh, the child alone with strangers. I was tied up and couldn't make oh. it. Oh, I thought for some reason I thought priorities. You were i was on one a, a while back it's been a I while like now. A, i think it was just a generic Picasso yeah thing. i think that was just a hang it was just yes just, sir that was yeah. it we were just talking we were talking about books um <laughs> yeah sorry go ahead mitch i mean no you're good i just I uh, wanted to say <laughs> you got your gothic i got my sticker i got my mug too nice oh nice i got a i got my gothics back here somewhere if you want to display them you can We'll allow it. I've got Boom. The, the paperback and the hardcover here. Sorry, I had to kick Loki out of the room for a little bit so the men could talk books. Yes. <laughs> and ladies, the apparently. Ladies. Out of here. I didn't, I didn't go no through ladies this. yet. Sorry. I saw Patty said she could make it. Um, but well, yeah, I, I don't. We're doing a giveaway today, tonight, right? We we're are, giveaway. yes, we're doing a giveaway. Thank you for ruining my announcement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Well, it was in this. It was. Was it? In, was it in the post? Is it it kind of sort of. We we alluded to it. Oh, it's a surprise. Oh, okay, yeah, it was right. a surprise. But I'll just, it's cool. I'll, no, I'll, no, you say, and I'll hold. Hey, I'll hand this is your shelf, Philip. This is your no, shelf. No, no, no. All right, I'm gonna hand them on yeah. it. Did, what book of yours are we talking about tonight, Mitchell? <laughs> hey, I'll write a book that we can talk about. I'll think about it. I've got These tons of things, ideas. Mitch. These are the things, Mitch. Yes. Right? Yes. We'll announce a giveaway right now since Philip ruined the surprise. Um, we're gonna give away a Gothic arc and a uh, Saculina novella. Both signed by the man himself, and maybe with the doodle. Nice. That's and awesome. We didn't talk about a doodle, but <laughs> and if you have if you have both of those things for some reason, we can figure something else out. Yeah, because we'll we'll give away the main winner will win Gothic. The second place will get Saculina, and I'll probably win both. <laughs> it is what it we'll is. The main we'll say the main for the main winner can choose between the two, and then the yes, second. yes. And then the, the second place person gets sloppy seconds. Yeah, obviously. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, what, what I like to do with these book clubs is just take a second at the beginning to introduce yourself, say, you know, where you're from, if you want to say how you heard of Philip um, and how much you love the Fricassi Freaks uh, Facebook group because it's the best. Um, so yeah, Eric, we'll start with you. Uh, you've been on one of these uh You've been on the YouTube channel before and in the Fricasi group. Uh, Eric did the audiobook for Gothic. If you had a chance to listen to it, it is amazing. I've listened to it twice. Special surprise guest. Yes. That's exactly how I was going to introduce myself. How so I sorry. am Philip. <laughs> Look, man, you're just, you're just. You're gonna, I'm going to feel bad about spoiling somebody's surprise. Don't. That's like the one thing I love doing. I really like, I love it. I'm the guy Every, shows, everybody's the guy spoiling the everybody's everything. <laughs> I gotta, I'm the guy goes out onto the porch at the surprise party and he's like, hey, come on, here, come on, hurry up. Listen, it's, come it's, on in. I think it's Caleb's birthday. I just want to announce that before he gets a chance to say anything. <laughs> yeah. It actually was his birthday recently. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Uh, yeah, so, Eric, uh, I'm in Rhode Island, and I was lucky enough to read uh, Gothic for Phil. And people seem to like it, so that's nice. I read, yeah, it's awesome. Narrate, narrate gothic, yeah, yeah. I did, I did read it and then read it out loud. Read I did both. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, Tom, we'll go with you next. Yeah, I'm Tom Finnegan. I'm just a fanboy here from California. Love it. Um, yeah, enjoying all of Philip's work so far. I think I need to read Saculina and one other, otherwise. I've enjoyed them all. That's awesome. Nice. Flash. Yeah. Flash here. Phil. Phil is my name, but I two L's. Two L's, Philip. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Boys in the Valley was my first. I, I heard through that through uh, Jeff on the Jeff word and yeah. uh, picked that up. And I breezed through that book. That was best book in uh, 2021. That was the best read for me. That was an awesome book. And every book since, uh, Child Alone with Strangers, Gothic, I breeze through these books. I just devour them. So I'm kind of pacing mm -hmm. myself because I don't have everything by Phil yet, but uh, I'm in I'm in the hunt. So. Yeah, you're awesome. all caught up on novels, it sounds like. What's that? It sounds like you're all caught up on novels. Yeah, yeah. I did. I got the, uh, oh. the two from Thunderstorm just recently. Beneath oh. the Pale Sky and, and uh, Behold the Void. Nice. Uh, yeah. But I'm pacing, as I said, I'm pacing myself. So That's awesome. Those books look gorgeous. I bought mine through Camelot, oh, yeah. and I haven't received them yet. So mm. I'm jealous of everyone that got them. Yeah, I'll get the Storm books. <laughs> uh, Caleb, let's go with you. Cool. Uh, I'm Caleb uh, from Virginia. Um, I'm a relatively new fan uh brother my brother got me a whole bunch of uh a bunch of your books for christmas this past year uh -huh. um and uh i started with uh behold the void and it just kind of blew me away uh, i knew that i'd be uh reading these books forever <laughs> uh -huh. as long as you put them awesome. out how, um, did, how did your brother know uh to buy those books uh i i have no idea um, he's really not really a big reader, so uh, I'll have how to ask random! Now I came across that. 
Um, but yep, uh, Behold the Void really, really uh, kind of blew my hair back. So I was very excited to dive into Gothic when that came out. And here I am. And the, the awesome. Procrastia. It's cool. It's cool that you started with the, uh, the first book, you know, yeah. versus yeah. finding me now and going back. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I have a whole bunch of your books to, to get to. I'm very excited about. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, Tim Bedwell, you're up. Hey, what's going on? Name's Tim Bedwell. I live in uh, central Florida, small town of Brooksville. Got a little place up in Fort Payne, Alabama, so I play around up there some. And uh, I found out about the, the Fracassi by uh, just screwing around on the internet. And I think, uh, I think maybe Earthlings release, I think I saw that Halloween release was coming out, hadn't heard of Philip at all. And maybe Jeff Terry talking about it. I can't remember which was first, but yeah. got me interested. So I jumped on that book and uh, been a fan ever since. I think, uh, I think, I think, Boys in the Valley blew my socks off. A child alone with strangers just might be uh, might be saying Philip Fricasi is my favorite author. I've been saying he's <laughs> one of my favorite authors now for a little while, but uh, I I might not be able to say that anymore. It's it's hard to decide, but <clears throat> might be the one for me. Oh, that, yeah, that book is amazing. <clears throat> awesome, glad you're here, Stephen Dwayne Allison Jr. You were Hello, up. Who, who who really needs no introduction? No introduction. I mean, the man's <laughs> got, got four names. Up on any toes, <laughs> announcing by his birthday. <laughs> I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, I started this group with Philip, or not with Philip, with Mitch and Joshua. We met on the Josh word or the Jeff word. You know, became a yeah, big fan. Yeah, the Josh word. <laughs> the Josh word. <laughs> yeah, when's that gonna launch? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon. <laughs> Is it gonna be T centered? Oh, yeah. it, it might need to be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I've just been in love with Philip's work for a long time, and I'm really happy that everybody's in the group, and I'm really proud of everything. I feel like you sort of accidentally stumbled upon accomplishing. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. All right, Joshua, you're up. Uh, my name is Joshua. I learned about Philip from a loud guy that needs a haircut on YouTube. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I, I like the group. Great group, great group. Uh, Solomon. Hello, Solomon here from uh, Bettendorf, Iowa. Uh, I um, heard about you from a friend. I was looking for something that was actually horror. Um, I was really bummed out for a while because you, you look for horror and a lot of people say, oh, this is a horror book, this is scary. And, it's just not a lot of the new stuff is it, it just falls short. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, she said, no, nope, this is the one you got to check out. And then I found you guys here. So I decided, hey, let me check this out. Nice. Awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Solomon, that red mask behind you, uh, I guess, would be to your right. To your right, my right, your right. <laughs> that thing looks cool. I can't tell. What yeah. Well, looks when like I live. Head. When I lived in Alaska, you know, I was a photographer for uh, a haunted house in Fairbanks. And this is some of the props for those from those That's guys. Really, Alaska. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, <she, laughs> awesome. they handmade a lot of these. That's, That's so badass. Cool. That is very cool. I just had this. This is from Guatemala. My little. Oh, That's Trumpy. awesome. He's wooden, though. He's, you, can, yeah. you can wear him, but then you could never take it off. <laughs> oh, you want to do that? <laughs> Make for a great story. It would. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we're on to Emilion. Look, I just crushed that. I said your <laughs> name right, like the you first did. time. And we're yeah. Twinkies. So exciting. <laughs> now you did. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Huh? Cool. No, I've had trouble with the headphones. Um, Giving you an international flavor, Melbourne, Australia. Here, it's just gone lunchtime on a Sunday. Believe wow. it or not, been um, a day ahead of you guys, probably. Um, yeah, I, my introduction was uh, "Boys in the Valley" with Phil. He made me cry, and I told him all about it too. Yeah, I remember that. 
I remember that getting that message. He's like, why did you do that? But I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. So we'll yeah, say why. So um, no, I had, had lots of fun at the first book club and um, hopefully have, have as much fun here today. <coughs> Should be fun. We'll see. Jerry's still out. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining. And Joel, you're the last one. Unless you are not there. Yeah. There you are. AFK. Uh oh, we got baby. <laughs> we got a baby, yeah. So I just, <laughs> what are we doing? I'm uh, answering like just how I. Yeah, just the, who you are, where you're from, and how you learned about Philip. What your oh, baby's I'm, name is. Yeah. This is Maeve, Miss Maeve right. Susan, May May. Um, I mm-hmm. live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I live nice. by Lake Superior, Snow Country. <laughs> Um, and I just, I bought uh, Boys in the Valley when that came out. And then I just started hearing things and I thought it sounded so good. So I read it and um, that just got me into it. And since then, any book uh, that comes out for me, I read. Oh, uh, thanks. I'm from, awesome. I don't know if you know this, I'm originally from Detroit. So oh, nice. I'm an original gander. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, mo- I, I moved to LA when I was, I actually moved to Chicago when I was 19. And then I um, moved from Chicago to LA uh, when I was 20. So yeah, yeah but I've been, and I've been in LA ever since. So yeah, but I'm, I was born and raised in Detroit. And, I'm all, and I go back there every couple years for the holidays and see family. Josh Mallerman lives literally three miles from my parents' house. So his, his girlfriend so we, actually is from a, right up by me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Allison's it's a, like a 20 minute drive, Uber. 25 minute drive from here, so yeah. She's a youper. Her family's up there and everything. Yeah. So Michigan's cool. Yeah. I still root still for the we... Lions. Still root for the Tigers. Still root for the Red Wings. Mm-hmm. Red Wings, yeah. When out Lions, are, Lions yeah. are having a good uh, little bounce back. They had a good well, season. The Lions, will win the, NFC, the Lions will win the NFC North next year, and then we'll see what happens in the playoffs. You know, it's a the Bears might uh, have a conversation about that. <laughs> yeah. And I wish I was going to stop and I'm I'm working on a tour for boys in the vet for this for this thing and I'm doing it myself and I won't going to spoil anything Mitch but I I was about to say but um but I wish I could I don't think I'll have time to get to Michigan I wish I did but the way it's my drive would be cuz I only have like I have like 2 weeks to go everywhere because then I have to go to um yeah, hard to get up here and then I'm going to the UK so in September. So I have to go, yeah. So I'm going like Oklahoma and then like through all that, like Kentucky and um uh all that other horse shit down in the middle <laughs> there. And then and then up to North North Carolina and then up the coast. I'm not gonna get as far down as Florida, Tim, but I am gonna get down to Alabama. Uh what port of Alabama are you gonna be at? There's a store called I can't remember off the top of my head what it's um called. I could look for you, but it's um, I don't know. Uh, this is near I'm near Georgia or near Atlanta, I think. Is it Decatur? Not Decatur. Um, well, now I gotta look, right? Uh, let me see. Yeah, we have to. <laughs> um, uh, see, math. I'm going to my, my tour. I'm yeah. It's like such a complicated thing. Um. Oh, here it is. It's um, Eagle Eye Bookshop in Decatur. Decatur, Eagle Eye. Yeah, and that's Decatur, Georgia. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm going to try and do an event there with Andy Davidson. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah, it would be rad. Yeah, do you and have that's, a date well, for that one? No, I had to put it all together, but it's basically going to be like I said. I have to do everything in two weeks, so it'll basically be um, late August. <laughs> mid to late august because i'm starting in the california then i'm going to arizona then i'm going to texas and then i have to go on like, a kind of family trip for a week and then um and then i'm doing like oklahoma missouri i have my map now so i can tell you uh uh um yeah missouri missouri kentucky um butcher cabin in louisville kentucky then decatur um georgia malaprops in north carolina joshua i don't know if you're near ash uh and park road books maybe and then up to like philly 
Boston, or Philly, New York, and then Boston. You're going to be at the Mysterious Bookshop, Phil? I'm going to try. I might just go sign stock for them. I don't know if they would have me in for like an event, but I will. I'm going to try and go to a couple. I might go to, I'm going to try and go to the Strand because um, Strand, there's yeah. a fellow, uh, fellow Nightfire author named Liz Karen, I think, um, who's from New York. And she's like friendly with the Strand in New York. And we were at a, a, a party recently and talking and she was like, if you want to do the Strand, let me know and I'll do the Strand. We'll do it together. Um, <clears throat> She's a book coming out yeah. in June. So I think we're gonna I think we're gonna try and do the strand, she and I together. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'm on Long Island nice. here in New York. So okay. Yeah, and I'm gonna there's a store in New Jersey there's a store in New Jersey. I'm gonna try and hit my buddy owns. But yeah, so I'll be hitting a couple of things there. And then once I and then I'll probably end in Boston and then I'll fly back to, to LA and then I gotta fly cool. to the UK for a couple of weeks. So anyway. Got to, you but, know. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> it I'm is gonna what it go is. Well, Orbit's launching the book in the UK, so they want me to come out and do a few signings in London. And then um, British Fantasy Convention is September like 13th. Um, so I'm going to go do that as well with them. So it'll be fun. Believe me, my wife's going to go. We're going to make a vacation out of it. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. The uh, It seems like the UK editions of boys aren't available for the united states at least the links i clicked said it's not can't be shipped to the united states um are you going to be getting some of those yourself to sell i'm sure i will be um i will ask for probably a couple of boxes of them um but you know I, so hopefully yeah um i think i, remember. I would Im imagine if you could buy it through amazon uk and have it shipped to the U.S. I remember I got the uh, first edition of what was that, the Katarina Ward, the Last House on Needless Street, before because the U.K. edition came out first. I just yeah, got I buy books from I yeah, got I buy books from Depository, Book Depository or Blackwell's. Yeah, uh, a, a trick of the a trick of the buying trade is if you go to Blackwell's, I think it's just Blackwell's dot com. You can buy any U.S. or U.K. edition of pretty much any book, and it's free shipping, no matter whether it's U.K. or oh, U.S. Wow. Yeah. So I get a lot of U.K. books from Blackwell's, and they ship them to me for free. So and and the, and, the, and they don't they don't put it into the cost of the book. Books are cheap. Um, so it's an amazing place to get U.K. editions if you're into U.K. editions. Yeah, I'll um, check cool. that out. I didn't know about that. Oh, you didn't know secret. about that, Tim? No. Yeah, let me just confirm it's blackwells.com versus blackwells.uk. <laughs> I shop there all, I buy stuff from them all the time. No, I'm sorry. It is blackwells.co.uk. Blackwells, all one word, like it sounds. Blackwells. I'll all check them word. out. Thank you. That, yeah, they're, oh yeah, they're awesome. Because I bought stuff there all the time. And you can buy even like if, if um, sometimes it's like um, Waterstones or whatever has like a signed edition of a uk book that you want a lot of not all the time but a lot of times blackwells will even have the signed version wow and it's free shipping yeah so yeah it's a good secret nice well uh i guess we can talk about gothic the reason why we're here yeah um, by the way emilion i shipped your um book plates today excellent thank you bill you're welcome Nice. So, uh, so what did y'all think about Gothic? We can be honest. If you hated it, just give it a thumbs down. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait are we wait. not being honest? <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, I know, but I'm the author is here. You're not. Uh, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. No, you have, have to do. It. You have to do. You have to focus on the. You 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 take the things that you don't like and you sort of oh. find a positive spin. Oh God! Like I didn't God, hate sorry. the dialogue. <laughs> yeah. I oh, once met a uh, former hated the least. I Mitch, once met a former that, NWA heavyweight champion, and he signed his book for me. And he he insisted that I looked at it before I walked away. He said, "Read what I wrote." And when I opened it up, it said, "Hey, buddy, I hope you like my book. If you don't, keep your damn mouth shut." And then he <laughs> That's there. Awesome. keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but no, go ahead. sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, no, let's talk about well, gothic. I was just going to say that mine's a visual answer. I'll do this. That answers your question. 
Uh oh, we got we got a bunch of gothics right there. You gotta put it's it right in front blurry. of your face, yeah. Emilio. Yeah. It's all fuzzy. You got that blur. There you go. Yeah, wow. there, you go. there you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I you guys are the same too, but yeah, so, no, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it too. It kept me up late a couple nights going, just okay, I just gotta find out what's gonna what's gonna happen here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I listened to the audiobook as well. Um, as you mentioned, Eric, like you said, did a great job. It was it was very uh it was good. Excellent. Yeah, I love I love the audiobook. Yeah, you know, I've done now um Child of the Only Strangers is getting the audio treatment currently. I don't know, Eric, do you know what's going well you can't probably can't say. I'm not sure who's narrating that or I haven't heard anything about that since you and I last spoke about it, Eric. All I but, know is it's it's not me. I think they were okay uh, trying to cast somebody else, but I don't know. I haven't heard. Okay, so so Child of the is getting. But the point I was going to make is I've had a few books. I think I've had four, like my story collections and stuff. Uh, and 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 the Gothic is the first time I you know in my nascent career here that I've but 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 still that I've heard so much positive response about the audio book there. <laughs> Where it seems people are going out of their way to say like how good the audiobook was, which I thought was a tribute to Eric because it obviously people really enjoyed it. He listened to it. Mm. That's good. That's well, good. Because what would you know what would really suck is like if I knew that I was reading a good book, but then the audiobook wasn't good. Like sometimes like some of the romance novels. <laughs> I've had and that stuff, happen too. So I I mean I read bad books that I'm assuming are going to be bad audiobooks. <laughs> but, but when I'm working with something that I know is good, if I fucked it up, I would feel really bad. <laughs> yeah. I've had, Wait. I've, I've had those comments too, so I'll refrain from saying which book, but... Well, uh, but I, not I, about I Gothic. Tell you, yeah. I can tell you not that... Not about uh, Gothic. Not about Gothic. No, different book. Boys, Boys in the Valley is going to be awesome. Yeah, that, that dude is like, that dude is legit. Yeah, I was gonna do a post about that probably next week. The um, so the guy who's doing um, I just really? found out the guy who's doing Boys in the Valley. His name is uh, David Aaron Baker, and he's an he's like an actor, but he's 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 been in a bunch of TV shows and stuff. But he's also been in a lot of theaters, a lot of Broadway. But he does a lot of audiobooks, and he did he does all Dean not all, but he does a lot of Dean Koontz books. He does a lot of Jonathan Latham books. Uh, he did a couple of Steinbeck books, so like for Penguin. So he's a big time mm. narrator, at least as far as his resume is concerned. And uh, very excited that he's doing Boys in the Valley. Um, he, I, you know, so I, I think he's going to do a fantastic job. And he, Eric, I didn't tell you this. You, you might all find it interesting. We actually got to spend about an hour on the phone, and we just kind of went through a lot of the, some questions that he had after reading the book and talked about some of the accents and some of the, you know, some, just some different ways of the, uh, maybe to say a name or two and stuff like that. And then what was also interesting was he's, he's like, by the way, and, and he goes, please don't let this offend you. Cause I, I don't, cause, but, but he's like, I found a couple errors in the advanced reading copy. And one was like a lot, um, and they were both like totally errors. Like one was like a logic uh, error where I, a guy had information he couldn't have had, and then another one was, oh, I I, I think there's a there's a scene where um where David, who, for those of you who haven't read it, this is not spoiling anything. It's a little tiny thing where David gives a uh, one of the characters gives another character a deck of cards and it's wrapped in a rubber band, and and uh, and uh, 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 the narrator who I was talking to said they didn't have rubber bands in 1905 or not <laughs> not not. <laughs> not domestically it was only like military you know use and industrial use so i looked it up and he was 100 percent right so i changed it to a uh afraid piece of afraid piece of twine or something and um Ow. and yeah so i was but and so i sent both of those i sent both fixes to my editor and i said is there still time to fix these and she was yeah well so he so he that is he a, made my as a detail oriented <laughs> dude yeah he that is, is so exactly. funny I was no, he was no that. joke. You would have been shredded. Samples? And then he did, did some other things. Did you test out samples of the voices on you? No, 
I okay. didn't ask him to do that. I learned my lesson when I was interviewing Eric once, not to put narrators in the spot like that. But um, <laughs> well, oh, but yeah. no, you just he just he did already do... have all this stuff kind of thought out, tested out on he, you. He did a little <laughs> Basil for me. He did a little of the Cockney Basil accent, uh, who's one of the children at the orphanage. So he did do a little dose of that. Well, I mean, the last time we talked, and you asked me to do. Um, I'm bad with proper nouns. The main character in Gothic, his name is... I said, is... Uh, do a little Tyson. Tyson. Yeah, do a yeah. little Tyson. Now, if I had had the opportunity to talk to you prior right. to... And, and prepare. And it was just you and I, then I right. totally... And not me. I, yeah. I totally would have I would have done it. And it's important to say for the record that Mitch is the one who asked. That was bullshit, Mitch. I, I am very rude. It's my Midwestern upbringing. <laughs> yeah. It's what we do. <laughs> But anyway, so sorry, Gothic, right. Yes, Gothic. Yeah, so everybody, thumbs up. Mm -hmm. um, did y'all have... So I... Yeah, no, Eric didn't really like it. Um, so it's it's weird for me to be yeah. leading this because... Sorry, guys. I, I see there you are. Yeah, put your glasses on. Um, I interviewed Eric with Philip, and we kind of talked a lot about Gothic, so I said, like, my standout scenes... Um, but I wanted to ask you guys, like, if there were any standout scenes for you that you wanted to talk with Philip or Eric about, if you listen to the audiobook. Um, like, for me, the baby scene at dinner was the standout scene in, like, the book and the audiobook. I thought Eric killed it. Um, but, yeah, I, don't, I would say the other scenes, but I don't want to take anything away from uh, what you guys have. So, so yeah. Does anybody want to speak up about their favorite scenes in the book? <laughs> Well, I'll say this about the baby scene really quick, and then while well, you guys think about it. What was interesting about the baby scene, which was I was at a point in the book where I was like, as I was writing it, and I was like, do I want to do this scene? Because this is taking the book a different direction tonally. Like, this is basically, and if I, I've been hinting at it throughout the book, but I hadn't really gone full like bad shit you know yeah. and i was like you know what let's just let's just do it let's just have some, let's just have fun with it and i was like i'm just gonna write this crazy bad shit scene where the baby's screaming at him in the restaurant and uh and i was so glad that i did and i actually when i did the second pass i added a lot more stuff sort of i kind of heightened everything throughout the book so i, I where I normally you would show restraint as a writer I was like, you know what, fuck it. Let's just have fun and let's just go crazy with it and make it a fun, a fun, crazy book. And that was, anyway, that scene was one of those, that, a moment where I was sort of like deciding which, how far to take it. And I decided so just cool. to, to go, yeah, to go all the way. I'm glad you did. <clears throat> um, I guess for me, one of the scenes that I liked was when, um, Tyson's wife or fiance or the lady, I forgot her name too. Uh, Sarah. Sarah. Uh, when she was going to get the desk, um, I thought that was pretty cool when it fell on the guy. I mean, not cool, but it, it, it was, was a good cool. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> um, another part Definitely of life, it, really, it wasn't really part of the book, I guess, but. Um, at the very end, where you say more books by Tyson Parks, at the, I just thought that was a nice little touch, since you know he's the author, and you know I'll, I'll put it right there. If nobody actually looked mm -hmm. in the back, I, ju I just thought that was a nice touch because you know you always see that at the end of books by oh more books by Philip Percasi or Stephen King, or so I, I just thought that was a nice little touch. The, the yeah. agent saying at the, end, at the end. The agent saying at the end that Gothic is a shitty title was a was a great <laughs> touch as well. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, whole, I wish yeah. they had let me. By the, way, uh, that, by the way, that that title scene, that title page is is accurate. Just for the record, I work because I worked with oh, making well, sure it was accurate. Good. So it's, it, it better. It is again. if you read the book and he talks about when this Everything. book came out or when this book came out. It is tech. It is. That's yeah, awesome. Is, yeah. I, I wish they had let me it read wasn't, that. It I wasn't wish it had been like, included in the audio book. I think that I think that would have been. I think it would have made oh, sense. Not. With oh, the yeah. with the theme of the book, I think it would have made sense. Yeah, I really you know wish what it would have been cool. Like you know what other books cool, by. If, 
as if you do that whole thing, I haven't listened to it. I'm sorry because I, I don't leave my house. But and I, the the where you you do the end of the audiobook and then it's like, thank you for listening. This was recorded, you know, directed by blah blah blah, and all the credits. And then at the end of all that, like a, almost like a like a Marvel, you know, post credit scene. Yeah. Then it said other books by Tyson Parks include, and then you're like, because that'd be even creepier because it'd almost be like off mm -hmm. the grid. Yeah, that would have been great. Audio book. Eric, is there a way to like talk to your boss or producer, director, whoever? Um, oh, who's now to make something like that? Is that possible? Do, do, we, do we get them on the call? Do we need to call them right now? Like Look, if I need to have Uncle Steve call somebody, I will. He and I are basically, <laughs> obviously, I are basically like um, Uncle Steve's tweeting at you left and right. So right, we're we're basically best friends. I mean, I don't want to overstate it, but we're basically best friends. Yeah. He's basically Are we brothers. Own. Don't step on Jesus' toes. Oh. <laughs> that is... but, I, but I feel like we're brothers. I think we both feel that way, even though we've never actually communicated with each other. I don't know. You seem <laughs> very <laughs> close. Kindred I know. Spirit. For those uh, um, fake Tyson titles at the end, do you, did you have like any like loose plots connected to any of those titles? No, but that's interesting. Yeah. No. He did mention some of the plots in the story, though. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He mentions a little bit. Yeah, that I thought thinking, but some of those titles are just like made up because they weren't actually in the actual story, and then some of them are tight are are mentioned in the story, including like the horror, like the ones that are at the end. Um, but no, that's interesting. No, I no, not other than what I wrote in the book. I think I'm not quite that like meta, but I <laughs> but I do want to write. I do have an idea for Gothic too. Which oh, we'll get to that later. Group. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, Mitch. Yeah. Sorry, Mitch. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Come Come on, dude. Mitch's show. Oh <laughs> my God. Everybody's just trying to ruin all the surprises here. I know. Oh. Should we just end it now? <laughs> no. <laughs> this, by the way, I bought this for myself. This is crystal. You hear that? Beautiful. It's crystal. It's from Italy. And I bought it for myself so I could drink my scotch. In. I love it. It was, it was $30 for a pack of six. Nothing but the best. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Cossy house. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else stand out scenes? He starts getting retweeted by Stephen King, and he's going out. He's buying like, all fancy he, crystal. I gotta buy crystal. Um, well, there's a story behind it. But I won't get into it. Boring. <laughs> Bill, I had a question about the character Diana. I I, I kept uh, I kept seeing her in, in my head. Um, the, the movie The Ninth Gate with Johnny Depp. Are you familiar with it? You ever see it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with it. I haven't seen the, it in a the long character time, in I... there, Leona uh, Telfer, who's chasing Johnny Depp throughout the whole movie trying to uh, get the book back. I, Is that uh, Maria Bello? Is that per no, 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 okay, no, okay. Maria Bello. No, I forget her name, but anyway, uh, the Club Diana, Dumas. That's a great book, too. Yes, awesome book. I can't wait till uh, uh, Centipede comes out with that. Yeah, next month. Uh, but Diana Montrezor, I kept uh, seeing her as the Leona character, just like uh, Leona's trying to get the book back, but Diana's trying to get the desk back. Uh, Interesting. Belongs to the family. So, do you have any uh, any inspiration for Diana, the character? So, okay, so here's what happened with Diana's character. So, no, um, no, no preset, um, no preset like um, inspiration. Uh, but so, uh, and, so Gothic was originally written as a um, novella, and I sent, and it was supposed to be the last story in Beneath the Pale Sky. And I sent it, the, I sent Beneath the Pale Sky to my agent at the time, um, and she read uh, the novella. Which I when mean, I say novella, I mean it was like forty five thousand words. It wasn't. It was basically wow. a short novel. And she said, <laughs> she said, look, and I'm just this is this is this is this is some of the stuff that I go through every day. She was like, look, you can keep this story as a novella and put it in your collection and get paid nothing for it, or you can add twenty or thirty thousand words, and I can try and sell it to you for you know try and sell it for like you know a lot of money. And um, and I was like, oh, let's do the second thing you said. So, <laughs> um, so Di a lot of Diana, Diana was always in the story, but I never really got into her uh, in an in-depth way uh, and her history and her family's history. That was all kind of added 
to flesh out sort of the novel and to flesh out the history of the novel, the, of the desk and everything, which I think ended up working. But um, although some reviewers think not, but um, but so no, so she was kind of uh, she was sort of something. I, she was part of the book that I I fleshed out to make um, a the book longer but also because I wanted to really get more into her character and into her motivation. Because I think in the original novella, you didn't even meet her until she showed up at the house and started oh, shooting wow. everybody. So that was the first time you met her in the novella. So it was super random. Hmm. Um, hmm. Uh, and they like that scene was longer. Like they talked more about her, why she was there and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then she just started blasting away. So, um, hmm. So I got to go, I got to really make her like a fully fleshed out character with the history and the family history and all that stuff. So um, so that was really, that was part of what um, inspired Diana's character. But no, I wasn't, she wasn't really based on anything. I, she was, no, she was just kind of like this, no, just pure imagination. Do you do you have any trouble writing or not trouble? I guess like I guess what are the difficulties? Do you have any difficulties when you're writing female characters? And I ask that only because my writing partner, she's from the Philippines, and you know I'll write or say something about a female character, and she's like, oh no, we would never say that, or we would never do that, or Solomon. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am so careful about writing female characters because it, it, I because there are reviewers, God bless them, who go on to review platforms and they don't care what you wrote. They don't care what the book's about. They don't care if it's the genre or, or how good or bad it is. And their whole review will be about, here's how this author dealt with female characters. And they and there, you can go on Goodreads and you can see these reviews. There's about, there's, there's dozens of them. And I, and, and, and I have gotten so much better at writing female characters because I I I actually listen to that feedback. My agent is a woman. My wife is a woman. My uh, editor is a woman at Nightfire, and, and so I'm. And my editor at Orbit is a woman at Orbit UK. So the book I'm writing now, for example, Brothers, there's a a strong woman, very central woman character who's very complex. And most of the conversation I had in early meetings with the editors was about her character and how to make sure she came off in a way that was fully fleshed out and not mansplaining. So it's, it. I think today, 2023, um, male writers have to be even more aware when they're writing female characters, um, which is a great thing actually, because it makes the book better, it makes the character better, it makes it, you know, it's a it's a one, it's been a wonderful learning experience for me, but it is something that I definitely like um am very aware of when I'm writing it. I don't have a hard time writing female characters at all, I didn't think. But now, um, and I've written, so I've written um, I wrote a book called Observe which I actually just sold, uh, which is a science fiction thriller. It's coming out in 2025. And um, and that announcement's gonna come in the next uh, two or three weeks, uh, which I'm very excited about. It was a huge deal for me. And that book, is the main character is um, a woman, a scientist. And then I wrote a book called The Blue Butterfly where the main two characters are both women. And I had beta readers galore going through it and saying, just, I was saying, just read the woman, read the women characters and tell me, if I got anything wrong, if anything seems off, if not only just like the way they think or feel or do things or the way I describe them or whatever it is, but also like little things like what she wears to bed or what, um, if I how I describe the, a piece of clothing. So being like a guy, I, it's, I'm overly aware of writing female characters and wanting to make sure that I get it right. And I'm, and um, so it's something I'm very, cautious of not not scared of but i want to make sure i get it right so i always said beta readers stuff like that read it women beta readers um and that's made me much better at writing them than i was probably even five years ago mm -hmm. so that's that's my sort of not direct answer but that's no that's it, great thank you but even even but even that even then <laughs> i still get called you know, horrible names. I still get called yeah, misogynist and all that stuff. But, 
But it's a okay. This is the one defensive thing I'll say. But it's like this like this lady went on and she like there's this long essay. It's like, it's like a page and a half of good where she describes all these all the female characters in Gothic. And she says like this like you know why does she care about being married? It's it's so 1950s and why is this woman sleeping with another woman? He's just reaching for blah blah blah. And then why is this other woman? Uh, oh, Violet, like, why did she, she was like upset? At, she, she like, I guess I mentioned that she broke up with a boyfriend or something, and that was somehow misogynist. I can't remember exactly what her point was. It's all in good reason. But, 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 the, my, but in my head, I was like, okay, but the male characters are really, really bad too. <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> right. like, 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 like Tyson is like a total, like, so it's like, yeah, I get like maybe the breakup with the boyfriend thing is bad, but like Tyson's like, a bond a monster like he's like this horrible vile person i don't know so it's like anyway i'm getting to where's the balance right yeah well it's yeah, just it like is, it's, it it's so not tough. like There's... the men are all great and glowing and the women are all like yeah or whatever. it's like, it's, like everybody it's, sucks yeah everybody's everybody's bad except for violet and um the detective's name i can't remember what was the detective's name? Ben, uh, there are ben. some folks. Oh, Ben. Yeah, yeah, Ben. That will, oh, uh, some folks will ben. say everybody is misogynistic and objectifies women. You'll see the right. same reviewers reviewing author after author after author. I read 30 pages. It's misogynistic, objectifies women, don't read it, and stuff like that. So uh, you, you got a, an uphill battle for sure. And I'm always amazed. There's there's some authors, some guys that really write women characters well, and I I'm 46 years old and I'm married. I had a sister, and I don't understand women. I don't think I could do a great job of of writing women. So when I see some of these other authors do such a great job, it kind of blows my mind. How do you how do you do that? What kind of insight do you have? Mm -hmm. But uh, I I guess for all male authors, you need quite a few ladies to uh to make it's sure a very, that everything it's is a, right before it gets out there it's a very good idea and i'll tell you guys i'll tell you something guys i'll tell you guys something about ben which uh how many of you guys have read child alone with strangers some of you it. half of you a few of you yeah phenomenal. anyway for those of you the, this isn't spoiler or anything but for those of you who've read child alone with strangers originally in the original manuscript tom i know tom has in the original manuscript uh for gothic uh ben's character the detective who hunts down the desk he was henry and there were wow. even moments a, a grown-up henry and there were even moments in gothic when he used his abilities to um feel out certain things oh, and my agent cool. was like you can't you can't we hadn't sold anything at this point this is like i was literally not sold that thing and she was like you're like tying in books that haven't been published dude and i was like <laughs> i know but i really want this to be henry and because i this is what i see as henry oh uh, that's a shame i see henry being a private yeah because i see henry being eventually eventually when you um, release the uh, author specific version like your preferred version yeah, right. yeah. You can author cut you know, I'm, not re I'm not rewriting that goddamn book. But I will We're say, going to make you rewrite it, <laughs> Philip. But I am going to do, I do want to do a we'll sequel to Child Lone Strangers. <laughs> I do want to do a sequel to Child Lone Strangers at some point where Henry's grown up. Wow, That'd be so That'd cool. Be cool. And I see him as being like a private detective. I love anyway, that. That's off topic. Who then changes his name. And your, and your heart changes. <laughs> <right. laughs> to Ben. <laughs> to Ben, right. <laughs> Well, Philip, you, you seem to leave these things, a lot of them, gothic the same way for me. You leave it where it feels like there's another story to tell. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily there's more of this story, but there always feels like now there's a next story. that these mm -hmm. Some of these characters now move on. We want to see what they do next. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if it's always good to explore that, but every time I finish one of your books, I feel that way. What's next now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I don't do that really purposely. I, I, you know, I, I think it's just sort of like, um, you know, I don't know. I think it's just, I think you kind of fall. I think you kind of um, you fall in love with the character, I guess. And if that character survives, what happens? Um, you kind of want to. It's a, it's a compliment. It's a wonderful compliment that that you care about the characters enough that you want to know what happens to them 
after the book ends. And um, and I do have I do have like I think Gothic two, which I'm calling Gothic the end. Um, oh no. Uh, so final. <laughs> oh, I'm not supposed to talk. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to talk about it. I'm sorry, Mitch. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about it. You're I was fine. about, to, I was about to tell you guys the plot of Gothic 2, but I can't. I forgot I can't do it. Mitch told me not to. No, so you can, Philip. Um, but it's I'm not, dealing it's not with the right the, I'm dealing with a crisis, okay? So I had Caleb's novella right here, and it just fell. So I'm worried about that. I don't want dense, okay? This was signed by Caleb. Um, but we can talk about Gothic 2 if you want. No, I mean, keep going. It's a little early. Going Gothic. No, no, keep yeah. going Gothic. No, but I think, I mean, what I told you before we went live, we can do organic, you know? So if, if we feel like, like what the conversation drinking? is going to Gothic too. This is a mix What are you drinking? I said, what are you drinking? He said, I'm drinking. That was the, that's, that was the pregame that he's describing. I don't yeah, remember anything good. about, it was about what. Uh, no, let's, no, let's keep going on Gothic. What, what, I mean, yeah. what else, what do you guys want to talk about? What, 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 are, what are questions can I answer? Oh, oh, you brought up if I could pick up on that one, if I could, um, you talked about Gothic Two and Tim. You talked about an open-ended finish. Um, my question about um Harry, who's the uh, the agent, Tyson's agent. He he reads through all the books that um, Tyson writes, and obviously his health is not the best. But I'm just trying to wonder how is he still alive? Because I thought the power of the relic and the power of the writing would just about kill him after the first book. But no, he's managed to survive. Two, three books, and we're having Tyson written, and he's still there at the end. So, is he a main character coming up potentially? He's a survivor, isn't he? Well, his yeah. assistant, I think, left from her bedroom window, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, she killed herself. She killed herself. Oh uh, well, Harry gets. Well, Harry drinks a lot, and <laughs> uh, and I think that, and he goes, he goes like I think when when they meet for dinner or lunch, um, he's all. He's obviously messed up, but no, I see Harry as being. See, agents are are stone cold killers, and I see Harry as just being like, like there's an element of like this shit doesn't even like affect me. Like I'm so dark, and I'm so like agent focused that like it, it, a little bit of like um in Tropic Thunder, like the Tom Cruise or like character, you know, like a little bit of that like edge where it's just like I don't nothing. Like I'm just, I'm all about making money and business and stuff like that. So I saw him sort of like not really being affected by the art because he wasn't reading it that way. He was reading it. How much can this, how much money can this story make me? And so I think mm -hmm. in that sense is how he kind of survived reading these manuscripts because he wasn't really absorbing it. He was just sort of like, okay, okay. Can I make money? How can I manipulate that to make more money? How can I sell that mm -hmm. to make more money? How can, I, how can I position it? So I think that's, I think that's kind of why. But his assistant was reading it and generally like getting into it, and she mm. she dies. She killed herself. Yeah. But that's that's why that's why Harry survives. And I would love to see Harry in a future iteration, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Uh, Violet, uh, Violet, and um, Ben are would be in part two if that were to yeah. happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I wanted to know about. The hell <laughs> happened. What happened to them? <laughs> yeah, we might get into that later. We'll see. Yeah, see, so there was some like, so, so I, I this is comes back to like making another creative decision. So, and I've, had, I've seen a couple of reviews where they mentioned this, where they were like, oh, I feel like the author was really setting up for a sequel because he left it kind of open ended with Violet and, and Ben. And I was like, and I, so what I did, here's what happened was I got about two or thirds of the way through the book. And I was like, the traditional book would be escalation, 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 finale, the end. And I was like, but I, I want to, I want to kind of like pull the rug out a little bit on that traditional, you know, map, you know, or out, you know, a structure. And so that was kind of why there was sort of like the climax. And then there was, and then you almost like had this whole another like story that happened like after the climax, you know, which was like when they all got shot and everything. And then, and then you kind of, then it's like six months later, or whatever it is, a year later, and he's different Tyson and all that stuff. And I really wanted to explore like um, 
kind of kind of messing with structure. And I like the idea of like having the Violet and Ben sort of being like this open-ended thing, having him sort of being open-ended, having, you know, you don't, there's not a lot of, like all the loose ends are definitely not tied up at the end of this book, right? There's the, mm-hmm. the agent reading the book, uh, somehow Tyson got him the book. I think, I think in a, I don't think it's in the book this way, but I think in the original book or story, Tyson was in the office when he was re- when he got he opened he saw it as that's me and looked up and Tyson was sitting in a chair across oh. from him. And then he was reading, started reading the book and he looked up again and Tyson was gone. And I think I took mm. that out because I just felt it was too gimmicky, maybe. And I just wanted it to be more like open-ended as to like how he actually got the manuscript after he'd been turned into this like monster you know um so i guess i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask one quick question so did tyson enter the portal like crochi did or was he just killed by the desk or is he like becoming part of the desk so tyson becomes an extension of the desk yeah um but not in the real world, not in the physical world that we know is reality. So much like the old man mm-hmm. uh, that Tyson sees um, throughout the story in the movie theater and then in his, uh, his office and all that stuff, the blind, the blind old man um, who is Croce, uh, Tyson is kind of becomes the new Croce. The new Croce, that new new. He's the new, yeah, he's yeah. like the desk. He's like a puppet for the desk or for the creature. So the desk is basically a portal uh, to, to like hellscape type of reality, but it's also um, like uh, much like, so if, I don't know if you guys have ever read a lot of Lovecraft or if you've ever read uh, my novella Commodore, but I love the idea, and I don't remember the creature's name because I'm not a Lovecraft guy really, but I love the idea of the of a, of a gateway also being a physical creature. Mm. Um, so it's not a gateway is not just like um, Stargate or something. It's like actually a a phys, It's actually a physical cosmic being that is huge beyond measure, but also a physical being that also serves. So in this case, the the, the so the desk is a creature that is also a gateway. Or the 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 altar, the you know the the stone is basically the creature's sort of man way to manifest into like different realities. Universe. But it's living, oh yeah, it's definitely organic, it's definitely alive. See if Croce I mean, if Croce was still in there somewhere, and you did write the sequel, and they ended up in like a bickering relationship with each other because they're kind of <laughs> peers now, but Croce continued to. Croce can <laughs> give him a hard time and yell at him and scream at him and tell yeah. him how worthless he was. He just well, never went should, away. Why aren't you picking up your socks? <laughs> um, I got to Eric, unfortunately, where I would tell you what my idea is for it, but Mitch is... We're not there oh, yet, got, the, got the handcuffs on me. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Mitch, don't you but, have to use the restroom? But, but that's interesting. <laughs> One day. I like the idea. Yeah, I like the idea of Croce. I, I do like the idea of Croce making a cameo in Gothic too at the end. I mean, okay, I'm gonna bring us back to Gothic, um, <laughs> just so I can like start recording. Are we gonna do the giveaway now? Uh, no, I was gonna talk about Gothic more, but uh, we can. No, talk no, about no, no, the no, no. Talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so uh, I guess I'll ask you a question about the artwork if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about the book. Or the cover, at least. So, hey, Keelan Patrick Burke. Uh, oh, he's connecting. Nikki. Uh, she joined, he or she joined, I would assume she, um, but we can't make assumptions. Joined hey, Jason McDonald. 20 minutes ago or so. Play it safe, safe. Yeah, got to play it safe. What up, Jason? Um, so, Keelan Patrick Burke did the artwork for the CD edition. Um, yeah. Did you have any input on what he did? Because, like, the back is, oh, I would assume, Croce. Yeah. Okay. See, when you work with independent presses, you can have way more input um, to get what you want. Um, 
Keelan did a great job, but I don't think he read the book. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so possible. There were elements which is which is not uncommon with the graphic designer. I uh, for a cover. They can't you can't read a you know, they all can't they got a lot of things going on they can't read. Um he's a writer. The, and the reason I'm saying that is because the some of the elements that he used in the cover weren't the elements that were in the book. So there were there were a few variations of the cover that I was like, no, 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 no. Um so yeah, so I had a, I had a ton of input into the cover. The cover is basically my yeah, this is the cover that I absolutely rubber stamped and we worked together to get to. This cover is um not that not that yeah, so that cover I did not have any input into the the Earthling edition. Um uh Paul sent me the uh desk painting and uh said, you know, and I th that's not true. I think I did say that um I said let's infuse the the title with some more purple to kind of tie it into um the boys cover a little bit, so mm -hmm. it kind of be a nice set because I'm a because I'm OCD. So I think some of the those that don't you have see, it, yeah. Didn't Francois do that. <clears throat> no, Glenn Chadbourne did that. Chad, yeah. Chadbourne, okay. And I had the original painting right here in my office of that oh, desk, wow. which I posted. Better on bet your bomb dollars Chadbourne signed it. I bet. <laughs> but yeah, he's Chadbourne signed it. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, just what? you. What? Just not you. not the the. Oh, yeah. not that. Oh, that. that no, no, he didn't sign Oh, you, your no. painting, yeah. The painting. Yeah. I have this. I have this. Yeah, awesome. that's so so sick. Yeah. The original. Yeah, the chapter and, breaks in the chapter breaks in that book are awesome. This yeah, is so this is the original. I was looking the through the earlier drawing. today. This is the original drawing. Uh, like uh, the, with. Glenn's, I'm, I'm sure nice he signed frame. it. Nice I like the box. Yeah, it's like a box frame. Um, so there's that, and then, um, and then I had the original painting for the actual desk is up, is up my wall up there. Um, yeah, I have a bunch of Glenn's work around my office because he did a couple covers for me. Oh, I have this. Oh, this is from Boys. So this is the original. Um, Drawing. Oh, I love that nice. piece. And you can oh, see for that match. You can see Glenn, <laughs> you can see Glenn's, Glenn's signature down there. I've seen your biceps. <laughs> there's that. Um. Yeah, and I've got like some other cool stuff. I got. I had the. I had the art from. Um. I had the art from. Uh. So Glenn Chadborn did. Um. He illustrated the wheel, which is a story in. Um. Beneath the Pale Sky, because Cemetery Dance was this bought the book that never came out. Right, so Cemetery Cemetery Dance bought um, the wheel, and it's going to eventually be part of their signature series whenever they get that back online. And Glenn did a bunch of interior artwork for it. He did a cover for mm. it. So yeah, so he and I have worked like on I think like four different projects now, and then um, and Francois and I have worked on four I think projects now. So one on one not yet announced, but. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I love working with those two guys. I mean, I really do. I, 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 I have no desire to, or need to go outside of like the Chadbourne, Francois. Cause they, <laughs> Steven gets, Steven gets dust jacket. Goes without saying. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. I hope he does a blur for boys. Well, no, oh, that would be amazing. It has You'll to be the next week. week. Yeah, because art is the um, the art is uh, locked in on April seventh. So mm. if he if he came if serious if it was like May first and it wasn't they could reprint the covers you don't think they'd be like well we got Stephen King now come on I don't know they seem to think it's well you know what I think it, I don't mind it because they're like look you know they want to make sure everything's books are done on time they're they say well you know time. Babe Ruth I mean he was a baseball player but <laughs> look there's always the there's always the paperback there's always the paperback so true. that's true yeah I'm gonna have both anyways yeah. it doesn't matter. but he's reading it right now so I mean how long does it take Stephen King to read a book ah uh, surely he reads it in a couple of days I mean he tweeted about it like what like 
three, four days ago now. So at least, yeah, he's got to be done with it. Sure, he's just savoring it. Like we all, yeah, he's he's true. Yeah, he, he like has a book hangover. Now. Steven, I just snorted Jeff Word up my nose because we said that. <laughs> you snorted Jeff Word up your nose. Oh God, I wish Jeff were here does, to hear that. Does Jeff Word know about that? <laughs> yeah. he's getting, he's probably that. hopefully losing a pickleball to his son right now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh without a doubt yeah um okay so i'm gonna get back to gothic chat just because that's why we're here um yeah. i wrote down a few questions as i was going through the book again today um so it's been a little bit since i i i, I listened to the audiobook from eric who again plug narrated it perfectly um like probably a few weeks ago i think right whenever it came out and then i listened again but uh, my second listen i was doing a bunch of manual labor so i wasn't like super paying attention in depth but i mean i've read it listened to it twice so um my questions and if you guys have questions as well feel free to chime in um so I was going to ask, like, when the desk was created, was it created by the Montresors, or was it before their time, and they just, like, inherited it, or found it, or took it over, or something? Like, what's what's yeah, the story? Yeah, that's a, a good question. Because, yeah, because the, the, the iteration of the desk, um, when... Fison has it. There is something in the book, and I don't remember what I wrote, to be honest, but there is something in the book where they talk about the desk being create being crafted. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't I don't, honestly don't remember who said it or when in the book it is, but there is some sort of mention about these artisans who crafted the wood engravings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a throw it's kind of a throwaway line, but but the desk as it but but the the desk as it um, exists in Tyson's world, right, was not the same as it existed in Croce's world in medieval times or whatever. It it, it was it's it's a later iteration of the of mm -hmm. the um, of the stone tablet yeah. um, of the altar, right, which is yeah. very much thematically kind of 2001 you know um so but it but it but it kind of like the wood obviously is infused with the same energy which is why the tendrils can come out and do what they do and all that stuff and feed off the blood and and um and stuff like that so um so so yeah so i don't know i think in the for flashbacks when when like Croce when like in the in the first chapter when the guy's like stuck or not was like stuck half in half out of the mm -hmm. of the of the desk um I think it's I think it's described I don't remember you guys I think it's described as like a altar yeah yeah yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 So, it's it an altar for a ceremony yeah yes. and then later it becomes like a desk and then it's going to be remain a desk for gothic too which we're not going to talk about yeah they made it into a desk yeah, we'll get there so, yeah. you know, <laughs> maybe maybe in i'm so excited to talk about gothic too no um so yeah, so yeah. No, maybe in gothic yeah. too you can go into the history of it give us some facts backstory if it comes to you or like i think people are like over the history of the desk i'm not oh i loved it yeah I I think, i'm cool. totally not i'm going full poltergeist in part two but go ahead mitch uh, yeah Hopefully not poltergeist. Yeah, that's that's cool. Um, hey, I so, like poltergeist too. The old man. The old. No, okay. So wait, wait Stephen Dwayne Allison Jr. The priest in Poltergeist Two was totally the inspiration for the old man. Okay, I can see that. Nice. The yep. the, the guy with the flat. Yeah. yeah. And uh, totally the inspiration for the old man, hundred percent. Well, so you've already used that idea then, huh? Then you've already hey, man, used it. some of the best ideas come from bad movies. It's true because yeah. you're like, well, how could they fuck up that idea? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me let me see if I can get it right. I for can it. do that better. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm not um, saying it's that guy, but he's definitely inspired by, for sure. That's cool. I, lo- I was always terrified of that creepy old priest, always, when I was a kid. Oh, when I saw that. When I saw the movie in, like, what was it, like, 82, maybe 83? I don't know when part two. Part two came out. I wasn't but. alive. I feel like yeah. it was like 85. Oh, man. Mitch, relax. Oh, you were alive. <laughs> I was not. Now I was he was alive, baby, dude. Me. I'm a baby. Jesus. Jesus. That franchise what is, is Pul- Pul- he was born. What is Poltergeist? <laughs> Poltergeist? What is this? It's like a chicken it's thing. A lovely yeah. Yeah. Are about we talking a about loving story about and pecking order? A house in a fancy <laughs> suburb. <laughs> Poltergeist. Pecking order is about a wild chicken farmer by the way um so poultry uh, guys is it really, that's is what it I was really? About. yeah dude it's it the really? story is fucking mad yeah i might have to yeah. check that out i know yeah, i want a copy it's, how it's do i wild. get a copy how do i get a copy of pecking order he, he you can plug that as many copy. times as you'd like mitch i appreciate it thank you <laughs> oh yeah but seriously but how does one acquire a copy of yeah. that book is it on john amazon amazon? Or it's, it's i'm just gonna pressure me on copy. amazon i i Self-published it, so you can find it on there. All right. I'm sure Mitchell sent you orders to get to get a copy. Yeah, I'll I'll buy them from Caleb and send them. No, no, like I'll I'll send you the money or something. Oh yeah, I mean you can also just message me on Facebook or whatever, and I'll send it out to you. Cool. Thank you. Oh yeah, the the story is fucking Um, wild. Speaking of uh, inspiration, you got from the priest for the old man. Who's was there any authors you were thinking of when you came up with the character of Tyson? Feels like he has some real 80s era Stephen King vibes to him when when he uh, really gets the tendrils stuck into him from the desk. So I was wondering if there was anybody you had in mind when you were writing that character. Not really, honestly, no. I mean, I, I get I've been asked before. And there's elements of McCammon with the historical stuff, but um, That's the other person I was the, thinking but, about, but yeah, but but um, but I don't really know Robert McCammon as a public figure well enough to use him as inspiration for Tyson. So it's I, I think I kind of stole bits and pieces from different things, like everything from like I think if anything, subconsciously, I would say he's almost like more Dean Kuntzy, you know, yeah. in a way because. Like Dean with his like weird wig and like his weird little pants and his weird little <laughs> clothes and stuff. And you do you want me to cut scene. this out? Like, are, no, are you can you leave this in. No, I'm totally <laughs> Dean hasn't done me a solid forever. But you know, he's, he seems like he's kind of wheeled out to like things and then he just like pipes. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of, I got a little Dean Koontz going there maybe. Um, but no, he's kind of his own guy, right? He's sort of yeah. angry. Um, you know, he's, he's Stephen King light, right. And he just, um, and he, and he always compares himself to the, to the King and, and, um, and so, no, I really, he's just ether, honestly, yeah. just maybe subconsciously pulled from this a little bit of Coons, a little bit of McCammon, a little bit of King, Get um, l- 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 a little bit, bit of Straub, a little bit of Straub. A little bit of Sutter Kane. Sure. Yeah, for sure. A little bit of Sutter Kane. But also just like very normal. Like part of the, like a lot of the complaints have been like, oh, he's so whiny. Like the, I, I'm sorry, I do read some reviews. But it's like, oh, he's so whiny. And like, it's like welcome to fucking being a writer. And, yeah. but yeah. like, but so early on when he's, um, like there's a scene when he, when he comes home after the Harry, very early, right after the Harry meeting. And he comes home and nobody's that nobody's home, and he pours himself a scotch and he sits down on the couch and he cries, and like that is such a writer thing to do, right? Like, I just, just spent like this morning bitching to my wife about how much I'm wasting my time writing all the yeah. time. Like Caleb was sitting on his couch with the scotch, that. crying just like eight hours ago, so he knows yeah, exactly yeah, what I'm yeah, talking about. Exactly. Well, I do that, but I don't write. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. That moment was sort of me trying to humanize him a little bit because I, he is he he is flawed, obviously. Um, but he's also like he's just he's just a guy trying to he's just a guy trying to get get by, like trying to do what he and he can't do what he wants to do, which is sort of tragic. He wants to write. He's all 
obsessed with this historical fiction. He and write his Michael he, Corbin series. And he can't write, and he can't <laughs> write it. And so he's being forced to write these other things that he doesn't want to write. And he's has been, and he's broke, and he's got a daughter that looks up to him, and he can't and he doesn't feel proud when he sees her. He feels ashamed because mm-hmm. he's and he's got this beautiful, amazing woman at his side who is like pities him almost you know and so there's and the, so there's a lot going on with him and um and he's he's greedy and he's jealous and he's full filled with envy and that's all that had to be set up so that when the desk began to take him over it made sense that he was like okay. got so obsessed so fast that he was so um you know, like I like it doesn't matter because this is the most important thing. Like all the other stuff doesn't matter. And um because in his mind, success writing breeds success with his partner and his daughter and everything else. So that's why he in his mind he was like it was okay to push all that aside to be this to to be this, you know, um vehicle for the evil of the desk because even though he knew what was going on to a degree he was it was okay with him and <laughs> i guarantee you the 80 out of 100 writers would be mm-hmm. like yep i would do the same thing because it's you know so yeah. that's i mean it's kind of a writer's book and people who aren't writers and read it i think are confused they're like why is he so whiny? Why is he so depressed? <laughs> Why would he do that? And it's like you just and I'm and it's not, you know, but it's anyone who achieves to be a creative success and what they risk, what they what they're willing to sacrifice to be that, you know. Yes, yeah, um, I found the character devastatingly relatable. So good yeah. job. Plus, this is where Carrie comes back in because everybody's driven a car, so everybody can relate to the movie Christine, <laughs> I mean. Christine. By Stephen King. <clears throat> oh yeah, because you know they oh. it has a similar spot spot in the plot. As Jeff Terry once so yes. wisely said, yeah. that the Gothic does for the desk what Stephen King did for the car. Um, but like how you were saying relatability, everybody. There's definitely. The by the way, there's definitely a definitely a Christine. Oh yeah, oh. that was not. I'm not going to say like I was not like inspired by christine because i super yeah. hardcore was Big, really the biggest inspirations for this book were christine and drag me to hell by sam Raimi. Mm. oh movie. yeah i see that movie rules it's kind of a smooshing yeah. together of the two with my own personal fears and anxieties thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> thrown in. So. um okay i'm gonna ask does somebody have another question i'm gonna or i'm gonna go for it no, okay. ask another one. We can all build on. Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, the stories that Croce was having the scribe write, like in the yeah. flashback or whatever you want to call it, um, were those the same stories that Tyson was writing, um, like in Black Altar or The Horror, or were they completely different? They were completely different. They were, they were, they were medieval versions of that, but... Okay. But but the idea was the desk is trying to get out. The whole point of the desk or of the of the the creature, the altar, the gateway is to get out, to 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 spread branch out and and start intertwining with the world as much as it can and controlling. So it's always trying to it's like bashing against the wall of reality, trying to get out there. And um, okay. so that's <clears throat> kind of the motivation for the for the evil that lives. With so it so it was doing the medieval version of what it was doing to Tyson to to Croce. But um, so it wasn't the same story. But 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 it leads to an interesting uh, insight, which you guys might appreciate. So the original iteration of this story, uh, the author bought the desk, and uh, through some sort of made up act activity um found like a secret panel in the, in the desk and the secret panel opened and there was like this manuscript inside and the manuscript was oh. 
this old Croce manuscript that he read and then he started revising it. And it wasn't so much about the desk being a creature as much as much as it was there's like this old and the old man was there, but it was it was more about the old man and Tyson cool. and ego and muse and less about the desk being like this force. And then I kind of twerked it. That's a that's the wrong word. You twerked it. Okay. Twerk. Into you were, twer you were twerking sometimes the I story. Twerk it, Mitch, okay. <laughs> to, um, it meant something different in our day. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, what's that chick's name? Mariah Carey. What's her name? Sure, a that's a girl. That's a chick. The, yeah. No, the mm -hmm. little blonde girl. What's her name? She the twerks. little blonde girl. She twerks. She, tw she did. That's she twerks. Little blonde. Oh, Miley. Yeah, oh, Miley Cyrus. Yeah, Miley so anyway, Cyrus. Yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> I love me. So that was sort it's of like Mariah Carey. <laughs> Welcome to my world. So that was sort of like an early iteration of this story. Again, something that I built upon and then ultimately changed. And I wanted to get a little funner and wilder with it. But that was one. That's really cool. Yeah, there is a version of a script somewhere. Oh, and so, oh, I can't talk about it. I mean, we're going to drop the time that we well, can. I was going to yeah. drop that I was going to be. I love that you're like, I'm not going to drop it, but let me just like drop it real quick. <laughs> we can. Do you want to? You know, we can talk about it. I, I have, I'm not I in have charge. I'm not in charge of this Zoom. I'm you are not. Beholden to, I'm going to dock beholden, your pay. It, I'm beholden to you. Keep, yeah. Um, Don't be the I one have, who I, doesn't I, let him spill the beans, Mitch. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm down to spill them if we want. And then we can go back. I mean, we, I can okay. always go back. I have more questions. Okay. So. Yeah, let's spill talk about the it. Beans. Let's talk about it. Spill yeah. The beans. Spill let's the do it. Beans. Philip, I'll I'll let you. No, 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 no. I no, 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 you no. You you should tell. You should say. Are you sure? Okay. Well, so, okay, I'll, 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 okay, I'll, you I'll do it. it. I'll, I'll intro it. Yeah. it. So okay. So 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 I'm doing. So I'm doing this tour. I told you guys about the tour, and it's going to cost me a ton of money that I don't have. And Nightfire is not paying for any of it. So. But this book, Boy Being Boys in the Valley, it's the way it works in publishing is if your first big trade release flops, you're kind of done. You're kind of wrapped. So I need this first book to do well. So to that end, I'm going to be putting a lot of money into promoting the book and touring the book stuff. and stuff like that. That's going to basically just be like me throwing money away. Like I'm going to be spending thousands of dollars to sell like, a handful of books but i but i want to get the word out and i want to do this cross country tour and all that stuff so to that end mitch and i have been talking about doing a kickstarter for the tour the which he mitch, mitch is basically working very hard on and the the biggest the big contribution to that is that i'm doing a um a limited edition book of the original screenplays for Gothic and Boys in the Valley before they were before my original screenplays before I adapted them to novels I'm going to put into a a book and sell as like a limited edition of like 200 or 250 copies that I'll sign and publish myself and sell through the Kickstarter gold so that's mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's a great idea um, Mitch Good thinking. And, and the idea is to yeah. raise funds. Yeah. This is literally the first I've heard of it. I think this Kickstarter is a great idea. It's to raise funds for me to use to yeah. rent a car, to fly to Texas, to fly to Arizona, because I'm not a big enough author where the publisher is willing to fly me to these places. So I'm, yeah. I'm doing it all on my own. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so we're going to announce that April, Mitch, April 1st, right? The plan is April, April, April 1st. 1st. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. Really watch. like well, we can, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what day is it? Uh, yeah, probably April 1st. Yeah, um, because I, I think it'd be fun to promote it. Like, this actually isn't an April Fool's joke, we are actually doing this, so I think it'll be fun promotion. I don't know. Can I place the order now? <laughs> yeah, can hey, Phil, if you want, <laughs> yeah, we've uh, we have some Your really cool things. Yeah, we have some really cool things away, that we're gonna we're offer. Gonna stop, yeah. And I'm, and by the way, this is not like I don't do the whole like 
hey, I'm doing a thing. Everybody give me money for nothing. I don't do that. So I do like, no, we're trying to come up with stuff that I can, we can sell that people might want. So we're doing the, we're doing the limited edition screenplay book. I forgot, Mitch, what else are we doing? We're doing the, uh, we're doing the a handwritten stuff. short story. Oh, a handwritten short that, story. That'll be like, um, where you buy like a raffle ticket. Time. Basically. You yeah, buy like, like a raffle literally ticket. this is the only the time only you'll pop. get this. Yeah. And if I don't yeah. win, I will be fucking devastated. <laughs> so. And we're doing like, what else are we doing, Mitch? You, you, you know better than uh, I do, I forget. Yeah, I've been looking at this shit a lot. Uh, we're we're giving away some Thunderstorm books. Uh, like a, a two, not giving, like, a, not giving away. Not giving, not giving away, away, but selling. Right. Them. Uh, oh, selling yeah. some paperback gothic, hardcover gothic, um, child of a stranger goth or gothic, uh, signed. So all that stuff signed. Um, doing a master class where uh, you'll meet with an author, give them editorial notes. Um, right. doing a book club where you'll meet with the book club, talk about it, like a collection like, or a novel, like what we're doing now, right? But with yeah. like a mm -hmm. book club here. Yep. And is um, it Tucker is a Tuckerization in there somewhere? Tuckerization, yeah. So you can uh pledge a certain amount and get put into a short story novel, whatever you want to do. I can't remember where um, I put Steven. I put Steven in one of my stories. I can't yeah. remember which one it was. It was the one in uh what was it? Something uh the one Tim Meyer did. Something awake, still awake. Cool. I can't remember. Yeah, but you I haven't read that one. Funny. I told you not to tell me. I don't know. I don't know what it out. is. I honestly don't know what it is, but anyway, so yeah, so we're going to do the, we're going to do this. Yeah. Kickstarter. To, for, and the idea is to fund, help me fund my tour. Yeah. yeah it's going to be so fun. Um, let me, uh, let me see what, Oh, some fate of Nero, uh, with doodles. Oh, yeah, a couple um, of fate of Nero's, yeah. But the screenplay. Book hey, do you guys all think that's kind of, Hey, do you guys think book. that's kind of be honest, honestly, please be honest. Is that kind of cool to do the screenplay book? With like a couple of the yeah. original screenplays, yeah. is that neat? That yeah, absolutely. Uh, mark me down, dude. Yep. Limited, yeah, definitely. limited, two hundred to two hundred fifty copies, all signed. The and it's kind of cool. What's cool about it is I think the original screenplays are um, they're different than the stories, you know. So you can <laughs> yeah. sort of see some like where I change stuff or get some different things. And I'm going to write also. I'm going to write an introduction to it that'll be unique to the book. Are they going to be the first? And we're not going to sell them for. We're not going to sell them for. We're going. We're think. We're talking like thirty five, forty bucks. Yeah. We're thinking forty bucks. Yeah, like forty bucks. Yeah, but it'll be like a three hundred page, you know, paperback. Are they? So you're going to have ranges. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. tiers. Yeah, okay. Tears. Yeah. Yeah. Tears. Yeah. Tears. Yeah. Like, we well, have the, some. So for the thing is things I've noticed for a lot of the because I do I've backed a lot of Kickstarters a lot of them like the lowest tiers is whatever the hardback is it's that in paperback. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be available? Because I think that'd be good. Like do a paperback. I'm not doing a hard. I wasn't. I wasn't 20, yeah, hard that's. Cover. Oh, you're not. Okay, I thought the I thought it was that's the thing on this. I don't, know, like, I don't think so. Because, because like I think you do. Like, is it necessary? Do like I could do like. You know what I could do is I could do like um like 10 hardcovers and have them like bound like i could have like paul michael kane bind them or something oh shit and, that would you know, be crazy and sell them for like more be great. more more money yeah, yeah they're as a higher long as i get one of the 10 i don't oh I'm yeah me too uh, down, yeah. Low number well, i think it's yeah. this these 10 people probably <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah as long as i'm in on the highest tier man yeah just be a higher tier i don't mind there being 10 that's as a good as idea one mine yeah, yep. Mitch, we should let's talk about that. Yeah, maybe I can have. We're gonna put Paul, a pin Paul, in that. Oh, Paul, <laughs> Paul, I could no. Paul would bind like, like ten of them. I would just basically send him ten of the paperbacks, and he would tear the covers off and would they, you know, and then rebind it as a nice. Uh, that would be cover. really cool. Yeah, and that could maybe I'd like, and I could maybe like. You have to figure it out, but yeah, we could do that. Roman numeral edition. Yeah, I just want to make, I just want to, I need to raise like, I need to raise a few grand so I can pay for my rental car and my flights and, um, and so I can get out there and promote the book. That's all I'm really trying to do. I'm just trying to cover my cost. Yeah. You know, I don't need to, I'm not trying to make oh, yeah. a bunch of money. Anyway, and then, uh, topic. we've got, yeah, yeah no, 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 this, is, this is on topic. topic. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we've got some signed journal stone paperbacks of Behold the Void, like the first paperback edition of that. Um, and then let's see. Uh, I think I have oh, we got a signed signed Earthling Gothic um, with Doodle. Yeah, so this is That's the original. Like, this is the original iteration yeah. of Behold the Void. So this is mm -hmm. a paperback. And there's a hardcover. The I'm not saying I'm not saying the hardcovers. I only have like three of them. I'm not going to keep them. But this is the yeah. paperback original, 2017 paperback, um, that we're going to sell like five of these. This Ooh, is the hardcover. hardcover. Yeah, this is the hardcover. Yeah, I will not be giving this away. Oh, I know. <laughs> you know what's funny? I got this for I think it was like. 50 bucks you get a like great that. deal on that Mitch yeah yeah because it, it said x library edition I was like oh god this could be really rough but it, it I don't Philip not trying to hurt your feelings I don't think it was checked out once so <laughs> it's in pristine <laughs> it's already out of the library <laughs> they sold that They're shit like, they were like get this thing out of here <laughs> like oh god nobody's getting this piece of shit um yeah, so yeah it's, it's all time uh, it's and I've never found a Picasso that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that's that's what we're gonna announce on the first so i'm glad you guys think that's cool and thank you for the ideas for the next hard saturday we need to talk to Paul yeah Michael the hard is a good idea uh, that's a good idea Mitch. Yeah, we'll, let's do that let's figure that out so i'm for uh, paul what, would, paul eight, would eighteen hundred dollars <laughs> eighteen hundred dollars each is that what your roman roman numeral editions are going for we can do that. oh so then roman numerals are sold out <laughs> Well, I mean, they sold also, out. you could even do like a special kickstarter only t-shirt yeah we people thought about that buy. too yeah i mean there's all but philip was like uh t-shirts are a headache i was like yeah probably we'll see we'll see we uh my my projections are getting philip to what his goal was like for the tour uh, so we just want to make sure and cover his cough because we don't yeah. want him to be out of anything. You can tell about that later. Um, on. Yeah. Yeah. We'll create like a new group just so we can talk about that and make sure that you guys get a hardcover. I think you already else. got another group. Hey, does no. anyone who's in this chat right now need one of these? Uh, oh, the book I plates? could use one of those for it's sure. A, it's a signed Gothic book plate. Tom, I know you have like I five have three. <laughs> yeah, it, that's look, awesome. If any, if, if any of you guys need one of these, um, message me on Facebook, and I'll send and I'll send you one. Well, I need awesome. one of those in the hardcover of the book that you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the screenplay book. Yeah, I thought it was <laughs> funny when you showed the hardcover. Everyone's ooh. <gasps> <laughs> yeah awesome. but i'm um, but anyway but if no one in here wants one of those book plates let me know no well, yeah sweet yeah um, All right, go ahead okay so back back to gothic yeah <laughs> i'm glad we talked about the kickstarter though and we got some good feedback um okay so let me see here so when I think I might have asked this earlier, but I've had a couple drinks. Um, so Croce entered the portal, right? Uh, unless I read that wrong. Um, so when Tyson dies, he is no. I already Croce, asked this. Croce, oh, Jesus Croce Christ! Is, yeah. Croce escapes into the portal, into the gateway yeah. because okay. the 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 church is. The church is being burned around him, and, right? Yeah, and the, the the mercenaries are coming to, and they're killing everybody in the church, and he basically escapes into the, into the desk. Yeah, and then uh, Frasini is that his name? Comes and gets the desk. Yeah, I don't what's, know, the, what's the, the dude's name? Place. Yeah, he's thinking about the, like his henchman. He was like the merchant who was For, hired Fornicini. To... Fornicini, like that yeah. that kid brings the letter to. And then right. Fornicini comes yeah. and gets the desk. Right. So where does the desk go when Fornicini takes it? I mean, there's like a huge stretch in between disappear. Croce and Tyson getting the desk. Are there other people that get the desk? 
Yeah. Or is this, there are definitely okay. other people. Yeah, there's definitely well, a lot of family, like, then it got lost in Europe, right? There's definitely a lot of activity. Does anyone happened. get like possessed in the way that Croce and Tyson get possessed by the desk? I, or alter, I think, whatever, I think it's attempt. I think it's attempted. I don't think to the degree. I think Tyson is sort of the new harbinger. I think the desk needs okay. someone with that kind of, with his kind of uh, audience, built in audience and, mm -hmm. and craftsmanship to get the message out there. Like, the mouth of madness is an obvious you know obviously tie-in but like the desk is searching for another mouthpiece um mm. so it's gone through some iterations trying to find it and i think there's a point in the book where they mention like it's been this and this i think when diana's uh yeah, monologue, yeah. monologuing at the at the table she's describing a few things that's been but no so it was kind of searching for another mouthpiece and tyson like was rolled up on like a red carpet um uh so yeah there are other adventures but i'm not going to write about any of those other adventures because i'm so too? done i'm so done writing period pieces i cannot even begin to tell you <laughs> i never want another write another period piece as long as i live i'm writing a period piece right now and it's it's so it just it's it's it, it's so much work and it's so slow it takes me so long to write a, mm -hmm. a novel um, and I'm just going to criticize everything I did wrong, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so the desk, with thank God the rubber bands were caught though. And then, right. And went through some iterations <laughs> and it ended up on Tyson's doorstep. That is sort of like it's sweet spot. Cool. So that kind of feeds into my other question. So Froche, there's a quote in your book in Gothic that says, um, the scribe is recording history and his knowledge of the beyond and i would assume that was referring to the portal but is it also referring to maybe the future of the desk and like what tyson is going to do with the desk's powers you know with writing the books and getting a bigger audience people kill themselves all that i don't think so i don't think so i think you mean the early chapters when the scribe is mm -hmm. yeah no i don't think so i think Again, I think that's just the desk desperately. The desk is an animal. Okay, so the desk is a, is, a de is a desperate, evil animal trying to get its feelers out into the more of the world. So it, it's just using these guys. You know, mm. it's not that... Interesting, yeah. It's not thinking that clearly. It's not thinking that structurally. It's like, I'm using you and I'm using you because I want to get out. It's like very much like the thing, you know? It's like, I just want to mm -hmm. get... Out. I just want to expose myself to as much as like people as I can because I want to I want to um, infiltrate this world. And so that's the desk is like it's it's an almost animal desire to to, hmm. to okay. reproduce to replicate its message. So Tyson is like like this like perfect storm of desire and need and reach and talent. So it like really latches on to him for the first time really since Brochi back in the medieval time. So it's been like three mm -hmm. or 400 years <clears throat> until it really found a host that it could really exploit. Um, that was like, a, like, you know, that perfect, like I said, that perfect storm of like all those things. So, so it, that's why Tyson's story is the one I'm telling since Croce's story, because it's the one that world that is really like making its move as it were. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so it's not quite that like omniscient. It's more like just animal desire, like to get, yeah. it's more puppet master than anything. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah, um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Does anyone else have more questions? Any other gothic not, questions? Yeah. I mean, we could talk about other stuff, but... You know, I'm like, going to have to reread the novel to because I, that's the problem with Philip is I, I breeze through these novels so quick. <laughs> like yeah. a, month from the, a month goes by and I forget what I read. You should really read... You should <laughs> listen to Eric. It was a great book. <laughs> 
You should listen to Eric's narration. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can't think of anything else I can say to you guys um, as far as like uh, fun top secret stuff other than um, we already talked about the thunderstorm stuff. Um, I, I just announced, I just signed a, uh, a big publishing deal for another novel um, that'll come out early 2025 science fiction not horror um i got a big uh limited edition deluxe limited edition release coming late this year or early next year uh from a, probably one of my favorite publishers um yes yeah, so there's a lot of fun stuff coming and um you know my goal is to just like the guys who did um um like no one is safe that's coming out in October. That cover is being produced by the same guys who did, um, well, I don't have it here. Uh, the long walk that centipede press just did for, uh, Stephen King's long walk. Same artists are doing the cover for my story collection. Um, yeah, Tom and Ruth, yeah, couple, Jim and right? Ruth, Jim and Ruth Keegan, Jim and Ruth Keegan. Yeah. So they're yeah. doing, they're doing no one is safe. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of, a lot of stuff coming. I'm working right now on a novel called Brothers, which is going to be out in June of 2024 from, uh, Nightfire and Observe, I'm sorry, and Orbit UK, and then Observe will come out early 2025. So that's what's up. Well, should we uh, do the giveaway? Yes. All Let's right. Do the giveaway. Yeah. Uh, give me. Give me. Like, other, anyone, if anyone else has any gothic questions, yeah, we can do the giveaway. Or just like any questions, we're hanging out. Yeah. Any we're questions? Fun. Yeah, it's fine. You have a thing for purple, Philip? <laughs> I did. I didn't. But then <laughs> people seem to really get excited about those purple cigs. So I. Dude, those purple cigs. I, I, mean, I love purple like books, and they seem to. I mean, and, this uh, is the that's the purple. That's that's the magic right there. No, the purple thing was. Paul I think Paul you actually discussed the limitations of the colors in the admin. No, Paul. The, the, oh, the yeah. purple with the purple with um, gothic and boys in the valley was all Paul Miller. Uh, so, it looks so, so good. It really looks good. Yeah. yeah no, he did a nice job. I don't. Because I literally had to buy, I didn't get a purple sig, and I had to buy this one on the secondary just to get that damn purple signature. Because oh, I have did a, you get a Did you get a? Did you get like a a, a dialogue bubble or no? No, Philip, I got no. just the regular red. Did but any since of you guys coming, get a dialogue bubble? I'm gonna make it's you give me a dialogue though. bubble it's classic. It's when you classic. come to Tulsa. That's classic. When you come to, I, it's classic, but I need, I need more. You know me. Because some of the, I, 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 have did, to be I over did, the I did, I did like, I did like dialogue bubbles in like, I think five or six of them. And then I did like blood drips on the horns and another few. And then I did purple, like 10 of them. I think 10 of them got purple. From see, Mitch, the problem, see, that's Paul Miller's fault. He didn't match the pens to the numbers. I just checked mine. Ben, yeah. well, what oh, is yours? Yeah. Is yours just red? red I have a red boys and a purple gothic, but they're both 78s. Yeah, Ben, ben well, I, don't, I don't think Paul cares. He's going to chat. Number. He's going to look right now. Yeah. Hey, any well, has a lot of books to get through. Is yours yeah. red or purple or what? Any update on the gothic slipcases by any chance? Red summer. Oh, okay, cool. I had no idea. There's 80 of them. <clears throat> I have one. I've seen the, which is it's beautiful. Oh yeah, I am excited. Yeah, that one looks really awesome. Yeah, he sent me the prototype. Yeah. Oh, oh, I got purple. Oh, Tim's got a purple. You got purple? Oh my no god, it's like drip. just like uh, have a. Well, have a no, YouTube the purple, no, the purple, purple didn't have the blood drips. The purple was only ten. Ten was signed in purple. Gothic envy. Yeah, and then right. and then there was in, rest were red. The other 
240 were red, and then some had blood drips and some had uh, dialogue. Bubbles, yeah. Bubbles, yeah. Tyson talking. I think Jeff got, Jeff Terry got um, a dialogue. He had dialogue when I think. If I remember correct. Yeah. I would have I would have done more, but I thought I that um I was worried that Paul would get mad at me for like writing all over the signature sheet. So I I only did a few of them because I didn't want to get I didn't want to get you like hit him. I didn't want to get yeah, I didn't want to get him upset, you know. So um all right, sorry, Mitch. So giveaway. You're muted, Mitch. I, I muted myself. Um, I'm oh. typing, so I didn't want to like. Oh, oh, oh. Get a... um, okay, so I've got our names in here. Let me see. Ten entries. I excluded myself and Philip. Um, I'm out. You exclude me. <laughs> well, I would say like you know, Philip, you'd save on shipping if you won. You can but... exclude me. I'm good. Exclude Stephen Dwayne Allison Jr. Okay, so we got nine. Odds are good, less or more than ten percent. Um, I don't know. You're still gonna win. I'm gonna win. Yeah, I excluded myself, but I'm gonna win. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Can I share my? You probably gotta die in in your house somewhere with nine sides, right? (laughs) I think Brian Evanson. I think Brian Evanson said he was gonna try and join if he got if he got back from his son's piano recital on time. Oh, then we're going to stay on until he joins. Yeah. I don't think I'm bed. <laughs> I'll stay up on that. I don't care. Well, uh, Terry's, at, Terry's, at, uh, Terry's at his Chuck E. Cheese, his kid's Chuck E. Cheese party, right? Yeah, he is. Well, but, I mean, he's in the same time zone as me. It's, what time is it? Uh, it's 10-10 where he's at. I think he's central. Still. Is he central? I know. I, I think he's. I think no, he's, he's, uh, he's East Coast. Sorry, East so it's eleven. It's eleven. <laughs> yeah. it's late. Can I just say thank you to Tim for offering up his purple gothic as a giveaway here? Thank you, Tim. That was really <laughs> nice of you, Tim. Very sweet of Tim. Very sweet of Tim. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Is this working? Okay. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, there's, there's all right so i've got na- nine names this is seamless oh my god i'm a professional okay <laughs> so i'm gonna click this let's see who wins they get their first dibs would you put okay you put oh no no it's not right it's not oh, right oh nikki, <laughs> nikki all right but now Congrats, you've got to come on nikki but, but now you've got it but now you've got to come on oh. you gotta turn the yeah camera nikki on. Now, now you have to okay let me see stop share she was typing in the chat earlier. Okay. Nikki, she said, what? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that happened. That okay, happened. So, Nikki, I, I was going to type everything, but you can hear us. Um, you won either a Gothic arc signed by Philip or a Saculina novella signed by Philip. So, you choose if you want the Gothic arc or the Saculina, and mm. Philip will ship it out to you. So now we just sit and wait. There's pressure right there. <laughs> that is That's pressure. Right yeah, That's we should pressure. probably. I, I, well, I you can do know. this. Is poor hosting. You can you can you can um, spin. No, you can spin the wheel again for the second second place. Right? Yeah, and you don't have to spell true. Saculina yeah, that's true. right. You can spell Saculina wrong, and we'll still know what you mean. Oh, Nikki wants the gothic. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right, Nikki wants so, the gothic. Now, so this is for Saculina. Gothic. Okay, so this is for Saculina. Okay, here we go. You guys can see this, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. The winner is Caleb. Oh, Caleb. Oh, Caleb. Caleb, you want a Saculina? Hopefully your brother have, did not give you a Saculina. Do you have it? Do you yeah, do you have nope, a Saculina? Don't have it. Uh, I'm nice. Sorry. That's awesome. Perfect. That story yeah. makes me hate barnacles. So this this is gonna go to Nikki. <laughs> Nick uh hey yes. Nikki, I need you to Give me your info somehow. So either message me or um, message 
me. Mick. You can, yeah, <laughs> mes message Philip or message us admins. Yeah, we'll, we can get you and, worked out. And Caleb, yeah. this is for you. Awesome. Very cool. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Big win. Winner, okay, winner. Kid, kids in the, um, uh, yeah, so just <laughs> message me about your address and stuff and I'll send it out. Sounds very good. Dope. Um, okay, so this was awesome. And Nikki, you're very welcome. Um, sorry, she just typed in the chat. Um, this was great. I love doing these book clubs. They're so much fun. If you guys want to hang a little bit more, we can. Um, if not, we can just sign off and uh, and we'll see Ed Boys in the Valley. If not, something soon. I'm happy to. I'm happy to hang out till eight thirty. So yeah. whoever wants to hang okay. out can hang soon. out. Fifteen more minutes. Yeah. To... Bow, can bow. Um, yeah, my, I'm just gonna go sit with my wife and watch a movie and relax. But, um, but I do need to get those information for everybody, Mitch. Someone, you'll yeah. help me with that. Yeah, um, I'll help you out. I'm I know Kayla. You right now. Uh, Tom, I'm gonna see you in Petaluma, right, buddy? Yes, sir. I'll have some stuff for you to sign. What can you possibly have that you didn't bring? Tom brought <laughs> straight up stack. Oh, oh, Phil, I've been on a roll, dude. I had to do like two pictures the other day just to post all the stuff i got in the last month i got that spanish what else did you have? oh yeah yeah oh, you hey, posted hey. a really nice pic yeah mitch, show what, uh, to the anthologies. Oh. mitch show what you picked up to the day oh yeah okay That's pretty cool. so i got i got this and I, even I think it's cool that he got that yeah yeah this was uh and it's so tiny it's so cute mm -hmm. um blur, this man. cover this cover by the way is so fucking dope dude it's so dope and the laird baron blurb is amazing who so did the I cover some, i have no idea so i got some grief about that cover i don't know who's all read alter so alter yeah um, but if you haven't read alter it's in uh behold the void it's a, it's kind of like my most controversial but also my most popular story and I, that's when i just optioned so i just